Amanda, thank you. A lot of questions surround the Omicron variant this morning. So far, no cases have been reported here in the United States, but the spread of this new strain may be ine inevitable here. Here to talk more about it is Dr. Oz. He joins us as he always does. Dr. Oz, it is so good to see you. Hope you had a good Thanksgiving. Had a wonderful time. Had all the kids home. What, what, what better time could there be? Oh, that is wonderful. I, I really love to hear that. And the thing is, the kids were able to travel. We were able to get out and about as well. But I know now, Dr. Oz, there's this worldwide concern, right? So what do you, we know so far about this new variant? We don't know that much, which is why I am concerned about the reactions that we're hearing from world leaders. It does seem that there's a little bit of a post-traumatic stress disorder event here. And mm -hmm. listen, it could be a problem. Uh, there's 50 mutations with this virus. 32 of them are on the spike protein. And remember, the vaccinations are, a are helping us aim our immune system at that spike protein. So if it changes a lot, then the ability of the vaccines to help us will be diminished. It's also possible that prior infections with COVID may not be as protective. All that's said and done is we don't know. And I want to know what are the shutdown criteria? What are the criteria that would allow us to lift the panic that's being raised right now? And Dr. Angeli Coetzee, she's the chair of the South African Medical Association. One of the first people to identify this new strain, she says the, the symptoms are pretty mild. Now, granted, she was dealing with younger people, but it doesn't seem to be more dangerous yet. We, again, we don't have enough information. So my advice as a doctor is tincture of time. Let's yeah. not react too aggressively right now. Give it a week, maybe more, to figure out what's really going down. Is it more dangerous? Is it more contagious? Is it resistant to the vaccine? And then we'll know. Well, it's interesting that you said that. So let me ask you this. Do you think that perhaps these travel bans then were put in place a little too early? I don't know what the criteria for placing the travel bans is. It's almost like copycats. So someone did it, so someone else did it. Because, listen, it's much safer to put a travel ban on if you're a leader than not. Because who's going to blame you for being overly protective? The people who'd lost their jobs and livelihood because of it, they're not going to be able to complain without too much power. But if you're wrong and you let travel happen and people are hurt, they'll all be blaming you. Again, it's not that we know for sure that it's bad or good. We just don't know anything. So what are the criteria? Will you lift the ban in five days if it turns out that this virus is not dangerous or that it's not more contagious? What's the criteria? We don't know. Well, here's something I want to ask you, because I just got my booster shot about, what, four days ago or so. If we get this booster, will it help protect against this latest variant? There's no one who can say yes to that question. Mm -hmm. There's no way of knowing. Because if the booster you got is the same uh, benefit as the old vaccine, and the old vaccine doesn't work against this variant, then why would the booster help you? And this is the kind of question, and you're said, very wise to ask it, that's frustrating to me because it's a very logical issue. It's should I go off and rush to get a booster, not knowing if there's any benefit to me? Now, maybe you should get the booster to protect against Delta variant and other ones we know there's some benefit to. But just, if you had your original mRNA vaccines, you're 70% protected as best we can tell. Not 95% like you used to be, but 70%. And it's going to diminish over time. But we don't know, you know whether that should drive you, if you're a young, healthy person, to get another vaccine. And anyone who tells you you have to do it is, is erroneous. So what should we do, Dr. Oz, if we are not vaccinated? Well, no, you ought to get vaccinated. That's, that's a whole different level of, of issue because vaccination dramatically reduces the chance of complications from any of the variants that we know about today. So I would definitely get vaccinated. We don't know for Om Omicron, but you know, I don't expect it to be completely resistant to the vaccines. So that's something I would definitely roll your sleeve up and do it for the team. <clears throat> it's the subsequent boosters and other issues and the mandates that are bothersome and worrisome to me. All right, Dr. Ross, thank you as always for joining us. Really good information. God bless. Take care. All right. You as well. And we do want to remind you that you can watch the Dr. Oz show. It's weekdays, 2 p.m. right here on Fox 35. Oh, some great information mm -hmm. there. Well, starting today, face masks that are now optional for parents and visitors.